1 John. You know, I want to talk about a very serious subject, and of course, everything in the Word of God is serious. Uh, heaven and earth shall pass away, but Jesus said, my word will never pass away. Uh, and, and we believe this book. I believe this book. I, I, holy men of old speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, righteousness, that the man of God or the woman of God may be perfect, that means mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And, and we know, we know that we're living in perilous times uh, all the way around us. My son Michael and I was talking before his service tonight, my, my son Daniel and I. And, and right now we are in the midst of, uh, of not just a pandemic of, of a virus, but a pandemic of fear, a pandemic of hate, a pandemic of, uh, of immorality, gross darkness is on the earth. And, and if we don't watch it, and I'm going to talk about how we can get the victory tonight, we will be sucked into the darkness. As a man thinketh, so is he. That means what we come through our eye gate and our ear gate, it's going to get in your heart whether you want it to or not. And, and how in the world do we, do we, now we're not going to become monks in a monastery, <laughs> okay? We're not going to stick our head in the dirt. I understand this. Uh, we're not going to hide because Jesus said, Father, I pray that you not take them out of the world, but you keep them in the world. Uh, we're here to be sought and we're here to be light. But we are in a very wicked time. And I'm telling you what, the temptation to just get pulled in to everything that is going on. And, and the problem is a lot of times that uh, us pastors or preachers or ministers, uh, all we've done is put more fuel on the fire. Uh, and there's a, there's, a, there's a fire of hell and there's a fire from heaven. I want to feed the fire of heaven. I want to feed your compassion for Christ. So look what it says here in 1 John chapter 5. And uh, we know that John was a man who truly walked with Christ. Verse 3, chapter 5. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. For this is the love of God. So the interpretation of love according to uh, the apostle John is that we keep his commandments. Jesus says, who it is that loveth me but he that doth the will of my father which is in heaven. And uh, he, he said, who's my brother, my sister, my mother, but they that do the will of my father in heaven. And he says, if you want to be my disciples, continue in my word. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. What God is asking of us and what God commands of us. And I've got a book back there on the parables of Christ. And the parables of Christ are the commandments of Christ. And it says, listen, verse four, this is the good news, that good news. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. So, so whatever God has given birth to or whoever is walking in the reality of God does what? <clears throat> they overcome the world. So we really want to look at this for a little while tonight. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And, and, and then you say, okay, and right away we would just assume, well, I'm born of God, I, I, I'm born from heaven, I, I'm born of the Lord. But, le, but actually he tells us what he's talking about. He says, and this is the victory, say this is the victory, that overcometh the world, even our faith. So he clarifies, what is it that is born of God within our heart? Our faith. Our faith in Christ, our trust in Christ, our confidence in Christ. That is what is born of God in us. Uh, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Hebrews, it says, consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you become weird and faint in your mind. You have not yet resisted on the blood, striving against sin. So how do we resist sin? Well, above all, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith you shall to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So we want to really zero in on this, this overcoming faith within us. See, you got overcoming faith within you. The faith of God is in you. You wouldn't even be born again if you didn't. But you got to let that faith rise up. How many know you can have a brain and not use it? Right? You can, you can have muscles in your body and not use it. You can have what we call common sense and not use it. You can have faith. And not use it. You can have faith and decide to get lazy. You can have faith. And when the enemy comes in, in whatever way he comes. 
in whatever form, whatever fashion, Paul said, we are not those who are, uh, are, are ignorant of the devices of the devil, but we act like we're ignorant. And so when the enemy comes knocking on my door, faith can rise up and say, no, I'm not going to take that. I'm not going to receive that. I'm not going to accept that. I'm not going to watch that. I'm not going to listen to that. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to do that. Faith not only takes a hold of God, but faith says, I agree with God and I, I'm, I'm not putting up with it. Submit yourself. See, faith submits to God. Faith, when Adam and his wife were confronted by God after they committed sin, and, and faith was still alive in them, and they heard the voice of God, what did they do? They ran from God. See, that's the spirit of the world that got into Adam and his wife. Up to that moment, the minute they heard the voice of God, they ran to God, and now they're running away from God, okay? Uh, right into the arms of the devil. And so the minute they heard the voice of God, in, 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 normally they would have ran right to God, but now they ran away from God. And, and, and that's what you're going to see a lot in society. I, I, for a very brief time in my life, I, I backslid. And I didn't really know any Christians, but there was a, a woman right down the road who, uh, uh, she was a charismatic Catholic Christian who, who smoked like a house on fire. But even the fact of the matter that she confessed to know Christ caused me to stay away from her house. And it wasn't like she was looking out the door in order to find me, but I would go all the way around to avoid that maybe she'd put her eyes on me. And this is one reason why you're not going to get a lot of people to come to a church that believes in the fullness of God's plan and purpose, holiness. It, it, they're going to run from it because of conviction and the devil. And, and see, but you got to take that shield of faith and you got to say, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I, and you apprehend the will of God. For what there is born of God overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he? Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God. So I want to read this in uh, two, three different uh, uh, translations. The Amplified says this, For everyone born of God is victorious and overcomes the world. Now, that part of us that is born of God is what we call the seed of God's word. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed, even by the word of God. We're born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. What does that mean? That means we heard the word of God. And in, in, in Ephesians chapter 1, it says, after you receive the truth, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is our earnest inheritance unto the redemption of our purchased possession, unto the praise of the glory of God. So when you hear the word... Either you're going to receive it into your heart. Now, there's different types of soil. There's stony ground. There's, uh, there, there's ground, shallow ground. There's ground with uh, 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 thorns and thistles. And then there's good ground that produces 30, 60, 100 fold. I want to be good ground. So when the word of God comes, not preachers' opinions or ideals or theologies, but when the word of God comes, I want to hide that word in my heart. Paul, David said that I what? I've hid your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So I want you to see in the old covenant and the new covenant the key to victorious living was God's word in your heart that creates confidence and faith and trust in God. I mean that's it. So the Amplified says for everyone born of God is victorious and overcomes the world. That's the faith the seed of faith in us. And this is the victory that has conquered and overcome the world. Our continuing persistent faith in Jesus the Son of God. Our continue. Listen. Be, because remember. Uh, in James it says. The trying of their faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work. So it's not how many start the race. It's how many finish the race. Remember it tells us. He that endureth to the end. The end of what? The, your race. Your life. Until you breathe your last breath. He that endureth to the end will be saved. He that endureth to the end will be saved. Uh, you, you might say to some extent that your, fin your, your, the, 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 your line, your finish line is the, the moment you breathe your breath. Wet breath, your last breath. When you cross that, that, when you go through that doorway of death, and we're all going to go through it if the Lord should tarry, were you loving Christ, serving Christ, obeying Christ, and following Christ? Were you? Was he your all in all? When Christ to us our life shall appear, uh, uh, yeah, but I prayed a prayer. That, 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 that's wonderful, and I, I hope you were sincere, and that's marvelous, and you're in that race. But he that endureth to the end. 
Um, matter of fact, Paul said in Second Timothy, he, he, he started naming some names and he says that Demas, having loved this present world, has departed from me. Demas has departed from me. He, he fell, you know, if any man loved the world or the things in the world, the love of the Father is not being developed in him. So here's another translation, because everyone who is a child of God has the power to win against the world. Everyone who's, who, who, who is a child of God, everyone who's born of God, remember it says, for as many as received him, to them gave he power. What is that power? The power of faith. Trust, confidence, reliance in God. Every one of us. I mean, it don't matter. You can't inherit this. This is not passed on from generations. You have to make a choice. You know what? I'm going to serve God. I'm going to follow God. I'm going to obey God. I'm going to love God. And because he's worthy of it. Thou art worthy to receive praise and glory and honor. For thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure they are and were created. And it takes faith. It, listen, it's going to take. You, you, you think it's, it's not been easy to live for God up to this moment. H hang on to your britches. Because it's going to even get more difficult. Paul told us perilous times will come. And, then he, and, and really what Paul talks about is people's nature and character. Perilous times, lovers of self, lovers of pleasures, fierce, despisers of those that are good. I just read a scripture tonight. It says that the wicked seek the life of the righteous. Did you know that? The wicked seek the life. And it says the wicked, because of the pride in his heart, will not seek after God. I'm not calling people wicked. God said because the wicked, because of the pride of his heart, will not seek God. There was a time when pride would not allow me to cry out to God. When pride would not allow me to die to self. When pride would not allow me to fall on my face. But the day will come when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And Jesus said this. He said, if you fall upon the rock... You'll be broken, but if the rock falls on you, you'll be grounded into powder. Well, who does God think he is to do that to us? He created us. Come on, man. He owns us. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all they that dwell therein. So I don't care how the heathen rant and rave. God, they're God haters. And I'm not putting them down. I understand. I was a God hater. I was wicked at one time. And, and you ought to admit it. Before, before you finally surrendered your life to Christ, you were wicked. You were wicked. Because the wicked, because of the pride, of the pride says, no one's telling me how to live. No one's telling me what to do. No one's telling me. But isn't that amazing? Here we are underneath an oppressive government right now. And they're telling everybody how to live. Somebody's going to rule and reign your life. I'm going to let it be Jesus. How about you? But that takes faith, doesn't it? And, and, and faith is, see, the world is going to oppress us. Christ is going to draw us. It's up to us. He, you know how he got people to follow him? You know how he did it? He just said, follow me. And, and that's really how salvation works. It just, follow me. And, and I know a lot of people want to believe that, oh, I go out here and I get a bunch of people to pray a prayer of salvation and then tell them, okay, now that you're saved, follow Jesus and see how many follow Jesus. And them are the ones who are saved. Them are the ones who faith rose up and said, you know what, you deserve my life. Faith says, God, you deserve my life, you deserve my mind, you deserve my money, you deserve my talents, you deserve a thousand times more, and I wish I could give it to you, but all I can do is give you what I got. <laughs> That's pretty good. Amen. Say amen. amen. Because everyone who is a child of God has the power to win against the world. I love the Phillips translation. The test of the genuineness of our love for God's family lies in this question. Do we love God himself and do we obey his commands? That's the test of our love. That's the question. Do we love God himself and do we obey his commands? For loving God means obeying his commands. For loving God means obeying his commands. And these commands of his are not burdensome. It's not legalism. I do it because God tells me to do it. He says, lift to holy hands, I'll lift holy hands. He said, dance, I'll dance. He said, shout. And as I do it by faith, all of a sudden, he inhabits the praises of his people. And here he comes. He's just looking for an opportunity to move in our life. And when we do this, it opens the door for God to move in our life. Now, when we disobey God, we won't trust God, we won't believe God, we won't follow God, we don't serve God. It opens the barn door for the devil and all the demons who know, they know they're running out of time. 
That's why it's going to get much worse. The devil is filled with great wrath because he knows the, 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 the time of his judgment is upon us, even in the days of Jesus. See, somehow devils understand this timetable that maybe we don't. Maybe we do understand it, but they said, have you come to judge us for our time? Have you come to torment us before our time? That's what the demons cried out in the Gadarean. Well, they knew that Jesus was God and he had the right to do whatever he wanted to do. But he didn't come to judge him yet. And, 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 and why, is, why is Jesus waiting, Pastor Mike? Because there's got to be one more harvest. It, it says that all of the earth must hear the gospel and then the end will come. And actually, technologically, within the next two years, that's going to happen. Because if Elon Musk, and I believe that God did this, and he's launching satellites into space, and there will be 40,000 satellites circling this little globe, and you'll be able to get, uh, 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 I mean, live streaming uh, uh, downloads anywhere in the world and so the gospel including all the filth will be available in the most remotest villages in the highest mountains and the lowest valleys of the world within two years within two years so are you saying in two years oh no I'm not just saying I'm just saying so it, it, we're not done yet listen he says and these commands of his are not burdensome for God's heredity or his seed within us will always conquer the world outside of us and around us. The seed of faith. Above all, taking the shoot of faith. Faith in Christ. And, and that means his love and his fear. Uh, he said to the Philippians, have, as you have always obeyed, not as my presence only, but not much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. See, it's both. And, and of course, uh, it takes faith to believe that God says what he means and means what he says. He's not a hard taskmaster. But you understand, can you imagine if he allowed sin in the heaven, what would happen to heaven? I mean, let me ask you something. How many of you would allow a rapist to live in a, your house full of kids? No way. Well, listen, the ultimate conclusion of the human heart that does not surrender and submit and yield to God takes upon himself or herself the very image and likeness of the devil. I'm going to say again. What is it? See the, it? see, the devil came to make those after himself. He came to steal, kill, and destroy us. So the devil came to transform the human heart to look just like him. And that's why Jesus said, your father is the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning. What did he do? He murdered the image of God in the heart of man. He, he, he's a liar and the father of it. When he tells it, it's of his own accord. So right now we've got, uh, uh, and we're talking about pulpits. We're talking about uh, cabinets in, in government. We're talking from top to low. Uh, the, 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 right now, and, and you're going to believe the news? They're full of lies. I mean, they're liars. I, I mean, before I got saved, I was a liar. I'll tell you anything. But now that I've got Christ in me and, 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 and faith rises up in my heart and says, you're going to preach the truth and you're not going to tell people what they want to hear. I'm not going to preach a lie. I, I'm, I'm going to tell people the truth of what God says. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he shall reap. He that sows through the flesh shall of the flesh reap the rush, destruction. But he that sows through the spirit shall the spirit reap life everlasting. My kids aren't getting to heaven because they got a hold of daddy's coattail. And actually, I'm just going to tell you, there's only two groups of people. When everything is said and done, there are those who are heaven bound and hell bound. That's all there is to it. There's two groups of people. Why? I don't know if I can believe that. Well, I'm sorry, but faith will rise up in your heart if you'd say, Lord, uh, I, I, I'm, and, and if you really understood in my one book, The Horrors of Hell, Splendors of Heaven, when God took me to hell back in 1975, and I finally wrote that book in about 2011, and, 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 and I have a revelation of why God had to create, create a place called hell. Because it's like, once you die, either if you die loving Christ, obeying Christ, following Christ, seeking Christ. I'm just saying your heart, like the prodigal son, is, is set towards home. He said you'll take on the nature of God forever. But if you're still in the pig pen and you didn't head home, when you die, you'll look just like the devil. You'll talk like him, think like him, act like When I was in hell, I heard those people cursing God, cursing 
cursing God and then screaming out for another chance and then cursing God and screaming out for another chance and cursing God. And this went on. I was in hell for two and a half hours. What was coming out of my mouth was just nothing but praises to the Lord. Nothing but worship. How awesome. How wonderful. Lord, you have the right to do whatever you want to do. And I'm going through the same torment they are. But my soul wasn't tormented like theirs because they were nothing but sin. So listen. He says, within us will always conquer the world outside of us. In fact, this faith of ours is the only way in which the world has been conquered. Faith in God, faith in Christ is the only way to truly conquer your flesh. Faith. Faith is not based on feelings or emotions or circumstances or, 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 or faith is based on nothing but God in his will and his word. It's his nature. That's what, and it says, in, in fact, this faith of ours is the only way, say the only way. Kind of reminds me of the, there's only one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, the name of Jesus. And there's so many lies now being preached in the pulpit where it, 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 there, is, there is no, you, you got to decide. Uh, Elijah said that. Because on the Sabbath day, the Israelites were going to the synagogue, but then through the week they were worshiping Baal. And Elijah came to bring them to a place of decision. If Baal is God, you serve him. But if God is God, serve him. And, and God is going to bring us all to this place. Are you going to love the world or are you going to love me? You can't love both. You just can't. And if you try to, you'll be miserable. <laughs> you'll be tormented, man. Yeah, but Pastor Mike, it's so difficult. Yeah, you got to, in order for your faith to be strong and grow, you've got to soak yourself in God's word and in fellowship with him. And if we soak ourselves in the news of the world, in the entertainment of the world, the opinion of the world, we soak ourselves in thoughts of worry and fear and anxiety, you're going to be full of the world. You, you can't help it. You know, we're like a sponge. That sponge, now if a sponge doesn't have its own mind, you choose where you're going to put that sponge. But that sponge, you know, one time it was a, a real sponge. This was a living uh, organism in, in, in the bottom of the ocean. And, and they captured it out and they dried it out. And, and now that it's a dead sponge. But that sponge, they don't care if you uh, slop it into a bucket of puke. Or you slop, or if you put it into a bucket of pure spring water and you can drip that water into your mouth. That sponge is going to whatever, and your life is like that. And by faith, you got to put yourself, you put yourself in the right bucket. You put yourself in the right bucket. And by faith, you got to say, I'm not putting myself in that bucket of puke. You want to put yourself in that bucket of puke? You go for it. But I don't want to be full of puke. I want to be full of faith. I want to be full of love. I want to be full of joy. I want to be full of peace. I want to be full of patience. I want to be full of kindness and tenderness. And it says speaking the truth in love. And so in fact this faith of ours is the only way in which the world has been conquered. For who could ever, for who, for who could ever be said to conquer the world in the true sense Except the man who really believes that Jesus is God's son. For words, someone who really in his heart says, you know what? I'm not looking for the answer. I'm not looking for a secret solution. I'm not looking for a remedy. I'm not looking. I've, uh, I've already found. And it's a person. His name is Jesus Christ. <laughs> and actually he found me and called me and I responded. I found the answer. I found the answer. His name is Jesus. And I got to soak myself in a relationship with Christ. And you understand as I preach this stuff, I really get heavily convicted. <laughs> so it's not me throwing rocks at you. I'm saying, yes, Lord, I got to soak in Jesus. Because I'll be honest with you, man, this, this stuff going on in our society, it sucks me in sometimes, man. And I'll take a look and I'll repent and go, oh, God, I should have looked. And it's not like I'm giving myself to it all day long, but it's just like, you know, headlines. You know, how many know headlines will get you? Headlines can get you. And conversations uh, 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 around a cup of coffee can get you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, all the, and listen, this thing is going to get worse because people are just giving themselves to it. And, and faith draws God. Listen to me. You know, and I don't really believe the stats, but fear draws demonic powers. And Job said, the things which I feared the most have come upon me. And, 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 and faith... You know, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. But I want to tell you, there's actually just two different categories of people. There are those who love God and those who 
don't. I'm just going to say that. People who love God, this is love that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. And if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul said, let him be damned. That's what Paul said. Okay? Those who love God and those who don't. Those who follow God, Christ, and those who don't. Those who obey Christ and those who don't. Uh, and, 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 and be doers of the word and not hearers. It takes faith to obey Christ. Faith says, you know what, Lord? And it says that the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared with the glory uh, uh, that shall be revealed in them that love him. And it says, if we, suffer with, if we suffer with him, we will reign with him. If Mike Yeager suffers with Christ, what kind of suffering? The same kind of suffering Jesus went through. I'm not talking about, yeah, sickness and disease is going to attack me, but by faith I can overcome it. But what it means is that if you really, really, really love God, you're not going to have very many friends. And it's not because you're attacking him or belittling him. You're there. You're trying to help him. You're loving on him. But the truth of the matter is they don't want to be around you. They're going to call you a religious idiot. They're going to say you lost your mind. You're goofy. Especially if you get drunk and the Holy Ghost around them. <laughs> And you're smiling. Well, how come you're so happy? I've heard people say, I'm going to just wipe that smile right off of your face. And I just start laughing. <laughs> I said, I've got Jesus in my heart, man. I mean, that's why the gang leader, he tried to stab me to death. And he shot me with a shotgun a couple of days later. <laughs> Praise God, I'm still here. I could have been in heaven, you know. But then the kids wouldn't have been here. And this church probably wouldn't have been here. And I wouldn't have got the opportunity to know you. And it, it, I'm so glad I met you. Tell somebody, I'm so glad I met you. <laughs> Amen. See, so God gives us relief along. But it says, if we suffer with them, we'll reign with him. If we deny him, he'll also deny us. Listen, if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. That means if nobody in this world ends up trusting, believing in God like in the days of Noah, that's their choice. They can choose to deny him, you know. Um, I've tried to help people. I've tried to help this community for 37 years. And the other day, a businessman who I've dealt with, and I know he, he's a sinner. He don't want to hear about Christ. I'll get around him, and he purposely cusses to get me upset. And the other day, I went to his business place because I needed something. And when I pulled into his driveway, he was in his, his work uh, garage, and, and he was, had a water hose, and he was spraying something down the place. He had another water hose laying in the driveway well I didn't see that and so I, I pulled up my wife's car on it my tire I guess went on the hose and he lost he, he lost it I mean this guy just you dumb blankety blank and I'm not I'm not telling you I mean this guy just lost it on me right and I, I, I'm thinking what because I didn't see the hose you dumb blankety blank you're on my water hose so I put it in reverse and backed up and I got out of my car to try to talk reason into me. And the first thing he did is began to attack the church, cussing and swearing at the church, cussing. And we've used them for business for years. He's made good money off of us. I didn't get buried at him. I thought, man, that poor, that poor lost soul, he is full of the devil. And as I just got back in my car and I drove out the driveway, and as I'm driving, I can see him in the mirror. And, and, and his driveway is about maybe 40 feet long, and he's still there right in the face. I'm thinking, that guy's going to have a heart attack, die, and go to hell. And he's just screaming and cussing and cursing. And I'm telling you, that's where we're headed. That's where people are going. There is being a dividing point right now. Either by faith we apprehend the divine nature of God, or you will be overcome with the nature of the devil. You know, those Christian crusades that we talk about, where I'm talking about, not, I'm not saying that Europeans didn't have the right to defend themselves against the Mohammedans who were murdering, raping, and killing, and enslaving. I'm not saying they shouldn't defend themselves, but a lot of those crusaders, man, they did a lot more than just defend themselves. And they did it all in the name of Jesus. You know where those guys are? They're in hell today. You know, so you can, you can go ahead and you can act like you're righteous, but you, you can't have no unrighteousness. You've got you to surrender your mind and your heart and your life to Christ. You can't let bitterness. See, by a shield of faith, God, you told me if I don't forgive, I won't be forgiven. And, and, and that's Christianity. And so there are those who trust God and those who don't. That's the only two categories of people are. Those who love God, those who don't. Those who follow Christ are those who don't. Those who obey Christ are those who don't. Those who trust Christ and those who don't. Yeah, but pastor, I disobey. Well, repent. Fall on your face. Say, Lord, I'm yours. 
See, listen, the most important thing there is, I know a lot of people think, oh, well, I'm just trying to apprehend the good blessings of God. Well, listen, no, you, you, better, you better make sure your soul it, on a daily basis is where it needs to be. I, I, I had a woman one time, she was a worship leader here. And, um, you know, and, 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 you know and, and, and her and her husband left. And so anyways, uh, years later, I ran into her and I couldn't believe it, how bitter she was at us. I thought, okay, I don't remember anything I did to make you bitter at me. But how many know, even if I had done something that would cause her to be upset with me, if she don't lose that bitterness, I don't care if you speak in tongues and prophesy, you are gone, man. You can't have hate in your heart. Jesus gave parables. You ought to read his parables. How? By faith you forgive. By faith speak not evil of any man. By faith follow him. By faith, it says in everything give thanks. By faith stop grumbling, griping, complaining, speaking evil, getting offended. Great peace. My kids like to quote that scripture because sometimes I'll get offended and they say, Great peace have them that love thy law and nothing. They say, Dad, nothing shall offend them. Why do you think Jesus meant her to be attitudes? He says this divine nature is so powerful that if somebody just walks up to you and slaps you in the face, that you will simply turn the other cheek and not get bitter. Well, I'm not letting nobody use me as a punching bag. I'm not saying... Let people use you as a punching bag. I'm saying don't get bitter. Don't get hateful. Don't get spiteful. Yeah, but you just don't understand what I've been through, Pastor Mike. Let me tell you something. I've known some people who went through hell and back, and they never got Christians, and they got a hold of the nature of God, and they were sweet and kind and nice. And I know people who didn't go through near as much, and they were just Christians. Yet every split we've ever gone through here was because people had their own motives and a lot of the times they were they got bitter at something. I had a woman actually quit coming to church because she said I didn't shake her hand one Sunday morning. <laughs> what is that all about? It's a fight of faith. Say faith. faith. I mean this thing is so important people. Um, uh, now, now uh, what, what is a brief description of faith? It is when God in his word, his will is supernaturally quickened in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. It is when God and his will is quickened by the Holy Ghost that's made alive to us. These realities become more real to us than anything in life. It is a revelation of G who Jesus Christ and God the Father really is and what he has done and what he is doing. Now, I didn't get these definitions from the world. I got them in my relationship with Christ. Faith is when you get a revelation of what God really has done for you. And you get a deep, deep heart of appreciation. Oh, thank you, Lord. For Do you know there's not one, one sin will separate a human being from God, right? One sin. And can you imagine, the Bible says we, that man it drinks iniquity like water. And yet every day when we cry out to God, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, Father. I just want to love you. I just want to serve you. I want to obey you. All those sins that you've done and that you don't know you're doing are washed away. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wonderful? Washed away. Uh, and so we need to have grateful hearts. Uh, the woman who, uh, Mary Magdalene, who Jesus cast the devils out of, they say it was her. She breaks open the alabaster box. She, she weeps. She falls to, uh, uh, she anoints him with oil. She falls to his feet, wipes his feet with her hair, kissing his feet. And, and of course, the Pharisees, they were uh, highly offended. And, and, and Jesus said, they are forgiven and much loveth much. The, the deeper your revelation of your wickedness, the, the, more, uh, the more grateful your heart will become. I'm so glad I don't get what I deserve. I deserve hell. I deserve it. I belong there, but for the blood of Jesus. So we got to have a grateful heart. And it takes faith to have a grateful heart. And you got to really want to know the truth and walk in the truth. Your mind, your will, your emotions, and every part of your being is overwhelmed with the reality of Jesus Christ. That's what faith is. Faith engulfs all of you. It possesses all of you. As that mustard seed faith grows, it begins. I know one day we had a plant. And we had it for many years. And, and it, it was a little plant when we first got it. And it, it was in a big plot, uh, uh, pot. Uh, what do they call it? Potter. And it grew and it grew and it grew. And we'd water it. And one day I accidentally brushed against it. When I did it went crashing to the floor. The only thing was as light as a feather. And I picked it up. Listen to this. 
And when I picked it up, the roots were all white and they looked like fluffy clouds and there was no dirt left in that pot. That plant devoured everything, all the dirt in that pot. It was nothing but a pure plant. And, and the Lord spoke to me and said, that's what the seed of faith does. To where every part of you becomes nothing but faith. And none of the world is left. None of the dirt of this world is left. <laughs> grab that. Grab that. Grab that. That's what faith is designed for. Faith is to apprehend the nature, the character, the personality of God. I'm not seeking riches and wealth and fame and power and authority. No, I'm, I want faith wants to apprehend the divine nature of God in everything to where no matter what anybody says or does or no matter how much the devil tempts me uh, and, and just thank God for my faith to get to the place where I'm no longer even attracted. I mean, I don't want it, but we get, we get sucked in by the fake, fake news, don't we? And, and may, may the day come when we get to the place where Smith Wigglesworth got. And even during World War I and World War II, and none of his sermons, none of, I can hardly believe it, and none of his messages did he ever say one word about the government or about the world or about Hitler or Stalin or anybody. All he did was preach Jesus. <laughs> That's awesome, man. To be so full of Jesus, because what you're full of is going to come out of you. What you're full of is going to come out of you. So if the wrong stuff's coming out, that means you're putting the wrong stuff in. Well, I don't want to do it. You better put up your shoe of faith. How? Soak in God's word and soak in God's presence. Soak in, in prayer. Sing. Just go ahead and start singing to the Lord. When you go home tonight, soak. Just if you, if you have somewhere to go and just if you don't have Christian music, then, then if you have Christian music, make sure you got music that builds you up spiritually. <laughs> it doesn't tear you down, right? So it, it, your mind, your will, your emotions and every part of your being is overwhelmed with this reality of Jesus Christ. And you enter into the realm where all things are possible. This is where by, where by God's grace, it is my hope and desire I want to take you. Uh, faith is like a diamond with many facets, and yet it's the same diamond. Uh, faith is spoken of in, in a very strong way. The word believe, trust, and faith over 800 times in the Bible. And Jesus did more teaching on the subject of faith than anything else. And I know uh, uh, Pastor Pete is teaching on faith right now. Hebrews eleven six. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It's impossible. So you got to develop your faith. You, you got to mature. You know, you, well, how do you do it? Well, how do you grow? It, how do you grow a house plant? Come on, man. It, it's not that complicated, but it takes faith. How, how do you grow in faith? Uh, you know, they, the disciples said to Jesus, he said, well, Lord, increase our faith. And he said this. He says, first the seed and then the blade and then, and, and, and then, the, then the corn and then the ripened corn in the blade. For in other words, it's, it's, it's like a plant. You, you plant it, you water it, you weed it, you nourish it, you take care of it. We, we've got a plant that ever since my wife and I got married, and what do we call that plant, Stephanie? Charlie. Charlie. Who? Charlie. Charlie. I've had that plant with us for the last 41 years. His name is Charlie, and he's still with us. You know why? Because we water him. Uh, probably he looks kind of raggedy right now. But, uh, but we've kept him all of these years. I don't know why he ain't a very pretty looking plant, but we've had Charlie with us for 40 years. And, and, but we've taken care of Charlie. If we stop feeding him, if we stop nourishing him, he's going to die. Your faith will die if you don't take care of it. And it's your responsibility it's your responsibility to take care of faith. Now, we're, we're going to close here in a minute. But let me tell you, faith is revealed to us. And these are all biblical. You can look these up. Look the word faith up. Faith is called a door. Did you know that? Faith, the door of faith. It's called a door. What? Into all that God has and is and wants to do. Faith is the door. There is no other door but faith in Christ. He has said, I am the door. Faith in Christ is the door. And, and every other door is going to lead to death and misery and, oh, terrible stuff. There is a door of faith. And you've got to walk through that door of faith by trust and confidence and reliance on God. It's called the step of faith. Listen, this is, these are scriptures. I'm, I'm just going to give, I'm going to write a book on this someday. It's called the obedience of faith. 
He's the savior of all them that obey him. Faith causes you to obey God. If you got a faith that doesn't cause you to obey God, your, your faith is dead. It doesn't mean anything. Even the devils believe in trouble, but without an old vain man, that faith without works is dead. Uh, it's called the walk of faith. We're, we're in what we call, it, Christianity is called the household of faith. Uh, it's called the unity until we all come into the unity of the faith. What does that mean? That faith brings you into the fullness of who God is. It, it fulfills John 17. Father, that they may be one with us even as we are one. Listen, your feelings, your emotions, your circumstances, e even your background doesn't bring you into this unity of faith. It doesn't bring you into oneness with God. And that's wonderful because if, if, if my becoming one with God depended upon my circumstances or my look or my education or my background, I, I'd be in trouble. But it doesn't. It, it, it makes us all one in Christ. See, in Christ, all of this, 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 this uh, race, race baiting, this race hatred, it is insane. I raised my children with, and you to ask them, I, we never, never have spoken evil against any race in my home. Never, never judged anybody the color of their skin or their education or their background. We've always said the most important thing is they love Jesus Christ and that, that's all that matters. Where's their love for Christ? Okay, so it's called the unity of faith. It's called the shield of faith. It's called the joy of faith. It's called the breastplate of faith. It's called the fight of faith because it is a fight of faith. The only way you're going to win this is by faith. You ain't going to win it no other way. It's called the common communication of your faith. It's called the life of faith. It's called the law of faith. Look it up, the law of faith. It's a law of faith. And, and uh, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is called the common faith. It's called the mystery of faith. This is a mystery. It really is. It's a mystery that most people in our modern society in the church. See, when I was a sinner, I had no idea what faith was, how faith worked, how faith operated, what faith said, what faith. Did you know faith has a body, a spiritual body? Did you know that? Faith, faith uh, uh, love is the heart of faith. Did you know that? Love is the heart of faith. Did you know hope is the eyes of faith? <laughs> Where'd you get this, Pastor Mike? A divine download. The eyes of faith. Your, your, uh, your mouth is the confession of faith. You know, your voice. Uh, the mystery of faith. The gift of faith. The circumcision of faith. What do you mean circumcision? Circumcise your flesh. Circumcise your heart. The circumcision of the heart. Faith it, it will crucify the flesh. When it says, for brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you will die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of your body, you shall live. You know what that spirit is? It, it's the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith will, will, will crucify your flesh. It mortifies your flesh. It says to your flesh, no, you're not going to do that. You're not going to watch that. You're not going to have that. You're not going to say that. You're not going to go by your feelings. You're not going to go by your circumstances. And God has, it's, it's been 37 years since I've been in this church. And I'm telling you, God has had to bring me to a place of being rooted and grounded in faith. I've had to trust God because uh, many times, weekly, it looked like we were going to be gone. And I refused to compromise and beg or try to connive or try to manipulate. I just said, Lord, you sent me here. I don't want to be here. But Lord, you put me here. And so here I am. <laughs> I try to convince God many times, Lord, I don't belong here. But he said, oh, yes, you do. It's called the righteousness of faith. Let me just give you the spiritual body and we'll close. Love is the heart. Love, hope is the eyes. Grace is the muscles of faith. See, we apprehend all these things by faith. The word is the language of faith. The word is the language of faith. It is written. Okay? Works are the hands of faith. Uh, patience is the feet of faith. Obedience is the voice, the ears, the nose of faith. You can smell it. Uh, it, it, confession is the mouth and righteousness is the lungs of faith. <laughs> Hallelujah.